Good evening. It's Saturday, January 13th. My name is Dave Coker, and this is Talking About Finance. All right, what a night. It's a night to be spent with like-minded guys and gals who only want one thing from the markets, not to get rich, but to build wealth. And there is a difference. Getting rich typically is viewed as a fast process, while wealth building, we know, takes time. Getting rich, especially quickly, is the domain of the huckster, the scam artist, or those who don't fully understand the markets. But building wealth is a slow process. It's a deliberative process, and it's a process that anyone can use to build wealth as long as they realize, as long as they're willing to accept, it takes time. How long does it take? Well, that depends upon many factors, such as how much can you invest? and the type of assets you target. So it's difficult to answer precisely, but we do know this. The sooner you start, the better. Even if you start today. And we also know you have to own the right assets. Forget the current crowd pleaser that the masses buy, passive indexes. No, the demographics of the market have changed. You now need to own cash flow. And cash flow is provided by assets such as dividend-paying stocks, coupon-paying bonds, and rental property. So now that we all agree on the destination, let's stop for a moment and take a deep breath. Let's all talk about finance. The S&P 500 finished up about 1.84% on the week. Two sectors outperformed the index. Technology and communication services. Another five sectors finished in the green, underperformed the index, but made money. And staples came in flat. Four sectors closed down on the week. Oh no, I'm so sorry, I read it wrong. Staples finished up 1.10%. And four sectors finished down on the week, with energy and utilities posting the largest losses. The VIX, remember it's called the Fear Index, it traded down on the week to 12.70. It started the week at 14.04. I'm getting very, very nervous. I've said this before. I'm getting the feeling something is going to happen. The 10-year note closed the week at 3.96%. It's down one-tenth of 1% on the week and up one-tenth of 1% year-to-date. Oil closed the week at 72.78 down about 1.4% on the week, and Dow down about 1.6% year-to-date. So yesterday was Friday. And now that I had a choice, I could choose between a UK exchange or ETFs traded in the United States. I went with the UK exchange. It was just a feeling. Of course, I didn't dodge the drop. After the ETFs launched, we saw lots of things dropping. But I guess I'm a creature of habit, and I just wanted to see the coins in my wallet. I'll let you know if that changes going forward, but nothing's going to change my dedication. I will continue to buy Bitcoin every Friday. I buy and never sell. And if you're not really into Bitcoin, that's something that some people, particularly those new to the markets, can't really understand. Now, let's find out what me and my buddies some 50 or so finance professionals from all around the planet talked about last week. And I apologize for my manners. I have to introduce this. We are Global Wall Street. And between Telegram and our personal networks on LinkedIn and WhatsApp, we know everyone, absolutely everyone in global finance. So this week we're reporting from Amsterdam. We're reporting from the city of London. We're reporting from Wall Street. We're reporting from San Francisco, and we're reporting from Sao Paulo. We have people everywhere, absolutely everywhere that matters. So let's go. Seven slides for seven days. Hey, guys, lovers of cash flow, seekers of profits, we all agree on our goal. So let's do this thing. Awesome. Now, we know that some people don't really understand what to do with money. And one of the best ways that a lot of people lose money is just to show off to other people how much money they got. You see this manifest in lots of different ways. Uh, There's an expression here in England. 
if you look at a guy in a Jaguar with a freshly made tailor fitted suit dressed to the nines, he's probably broke. But on the other hand, if you look at a guy who's wearing patched corduroys, and he's not driving a Jag, he's driving an old, a 10-year-old Citroen. He's likely friends with the king. It's just the way these things work, guys. Conspicuous consumption is to be avoided. But how about this as a show of conspicuous consumption? I thought this was really hilarious, right? And look, it's saying, days after the launch, you sit at a red light, the novelty's gone, you aren't any happier. Maybe it's your imagination, but the gaps in the door look off. You think you saw a car full of kids, teens, laughing at you. You're now in debt for a maim and you feel nothing. How much are you in debt for? I can't believe that people are paying 100,000 pounds for a wasting asset, a depreciating asset, such as a car. Or in this case, a truck. Still, it depreciates. We went through a period during pandemic when people, again, most of the people that have this view are new to the markets. They just got into stocks. They got into the markets in 2020 or so. And we saw the price of used cars boom. I've actually seen these people talking on social media. They're going to buy a car and in five years I'll sell it for more than I paid for it. No, no, no. We're seeing a reversion to the old ways. And we're never going to have those days, at least in the near term. I hope not. We'll see. If there's another lockdown, then yeah, we might end up with that. Still, one thing I do have to ask about all this, and the reason people got all this money to slosh about, is that we went through an era called, or a time I should say, called the era of free money. It's illustrated down on that chart there. And guys, you can see it. This is Fed, fund, Fed funds, right? And what we're doing here is we're looking at the effective. We're not looking at how the Fed set it. Of course, the current Fed funds rate is 5.25% to 5.50%. But we can see the effective rate settles at 5.33. Regardless, here's a point that very few people grasp. And again, I point the fingers at the loud people who are new to the markets, who have opinions, and in many cases, strong opinions, based upon what they've learned over the past two years. My God, absolutely incredible. If you look at Fed funds from 1990 to 2007, the average rate of interest was 4.37%. If you look at what happened post-global financial crisis, so we're talking 2008 to 2022, the average rate of interest was 0.51%, 51 basis points. And that includes the era of free money from roughly 2009 up to about 2016 when interest rates were zero and real, meaning interest rates adjusted for inflation, were negative. Of course, all sorts of risky assets boomed. What are you going to do? Stay in cash and get inflated away? I started, I really moved my property business into high gear when interest rates went to the zero in the UK. I went into a, a mode of buying a lot of properties, sometimes as many as one a year. I had to do that because to stay in cash in the bank meant I was just going to lose purchasing power. In other words, it would have been idiotic. Guys, we're not going to see these low interest rates like we saw from 2009 on again. Interest rates are going to mean revert. In other words, they're going to return to the average. I don't know exactly where it is. My, my guess is, my best estimate, I should say, at this point, we're going to see interest rates trending around 4%. Yeah, it's going to wreak havoc with stocks. I realize the index boys and those new to the markets are in denial. But it's going to happen. It just is. And part of the reason is this. Because Mr. Powell just printed a whole bunch of money. Absolutely incredible. And now what they're doing is really offensive. They're starting to take credit. They're predicting there will be a soft landing. It ain't going to happen. It only happened once. And even then we're stretching the definition of a soft landing. It only happened once since the end of World War II. We're going to see a recession. And there's evidence that it already started. And in fact, I kind of think we're going to see signs of it over the next few months. Now, that doesn't mean Mr. Powell, who rumors have it, has been politicized. 
It doesn't mean he's not going to cut interest rates and aggressively because this is an election year. But we'll have to see. I certainly wouldn't want to be him because the money supply is out of control. Inflation, nah, they're misstating inflation, guys. And don't believe me, if you live in the States, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? We never had $18 Big Macs until recently, over the past five years, because they've been printing money, huge sums of money. And the problem is this. The problem is we see spending surging. At the same time, look at the rate of growth of revenue. There's no comparison, guys. There's no comparison. You can see that spending outstrips the revenue by a wide margin. And again, look at the dates. This all happened post-global financial crisis. We started to see it accelerate in 2020 when we went into pandemic lockdown. And the red line, which indicates spending, is essentially just going up into the stratosphere. It's absolutely incredible. Is it sustainable? No. Oh, I should rephrase that. Is it sustainable? Yes. With massive tax hikes. That's the only way. They have to get some control over spending, but unfortunately, there's no will in the United States, which is why I generally recommend to people you need to own tangible, real, physical assets. Stocks are nice. You collect the dividend. You convert the dividend into tangible, real, physical assets. Gold, silver, art, rental property. There's a list of things that you can own. Things that are tangible. Things that are real. Things you can put your hands on. Oh, and the next one, Bitcoin, is for fun. And guys, yeah, I'm starting to get the queries now, and I'm sure many of you are, about the drop in, in, in Bitcoin prices. Is it a good time to buy? I hear this stuff all the time. Well, guys, I started buying Bitcoin every week about 10 years ago. That, of course, was maybe not the best time. It was a better time than now. The best time was when it first started, when Bitcoin was priced four decimal points one. Yes, 0 0.00001. That was probably the best time. But we don't have perfect 2020 vision going forward, do we? It might drop again. We don't know. So the best thing you can do is buy Bitcoin now. If you aren't already buying it, start to buy. Don't do it as a one-off. Buy it regularly, whether you buy it every week, every month, every quarter, even every year, although that's a little less frequent than what I would advise. So just put the same amount of money in every time. And keep in mind, you can literally buy $5 worth of Bitcoin at a pop. You don't have to spend 500 or 5,000 or heaven forbid, 50,000. Spend whatever you can afford to put into Bitcoin. You can afford to plug it into Bitcoin and not mess around with it forever. And that brings us to the next point about forecasts. Of course, forecasts are totally difficult to do, even with stocks. Bitcoin is notoriously uncooperative with forecasts. And what we're doing here, guys, is we're taking a look at momentum. We're looking at the relative strength index. And Plan B, who you know I've got a lot of time for, respect his work very much, has color-coded it. And you can see what goes on with the 200-week moving average. He's taking the Bitcoin price and he's dividing it by the 200-week moving average, and he's color-coding it. And take a look at where the blue is. Take a look in particular what happens after the blue. Take a look at the Bitcoin price. And you'll notice, every time we start a new cycle, whenever you see the, new, the blue manifest, whenever we see a new cycle, we tend to see higher highs than we saw in the previous cycle. So yeah, that's part of the reason why I'm buying Bitcoin every week. That's part of the reason why I will never stop. You should think about that as a strategy. All right, guys, thanks for your time. We just went out to dinner. We had a wonderful evening. I might go out again. You have a great night, whatever you get up to, an excellent weekend. New York is closed Monday. Plan your financial strategies. You're ready to hit it hard Tuesday. You're going to make a bucket of money. Take care.